Good day, everyone. My name is Ron Kreider. Today I'm doing a blog for the Catholic Radio Association. This is a special blog, and we're talking today about metadata. Metadata, to me, and most of the people that I'm working with realize that this is one of the most important tools in your toolbox relating to people who are listening to your radio station. Metadata, in short, in case you're not familiar with it, is this information, I'm going to take my little mouse here and run it around the circle here, and where it says, Morning Glory Now on the Air, Brian Patrick, that information pops up whenever this program starts. That's part of the metadata. Now, I'll give you a couple of examples. Suppose that this was a live call-in show. Then we would have placed in here the live call-in number. That information will stay here as long as the program's on. Now, when it switches to a break, goes to a break to play spots or your underwritings, then those underwritings will be displayed with the underwriter's name and maybe his email address or maybe his telephone number. Obviously, this type of information does not come easily because you have to put it in yourself. Once you put it in, it will stay there. You don't have to keep redoing it. Further, more part of the uh, metadata uh, is the information that's displayed on the website itself or and on the player. This is one of the uh, SecureNet players. SecureNet is the streaming company that we're using for this radio station. This, by the way, this is a radio station, a brand new radio station in Atlanta, Atlanta Catholic Radio, AM 1160. It's known as The Quest, Q-U-E-S-T. Fabulous 50,000 watt on the air a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so this is a player. This is our test player. This isn't actually the one that they're currently using, but this is my test player. This is one that shows you uh, uh, how uh, and what you can do. Now, there are many, many different players that SecureNet offers that don't look like this. Some of them are a bit more contemporary. I like this one because, it's to me, it's somewhat traditional. On the right side here, you will see where it says the Quest AM 1160, now on the air, and this program is the one that's now on the air. Now, all of this information we've found that I've added uh, by Photoshopping uh, the Quest AM 1160 down here to the bottom of this picture that I found on the Internet and put now on the air up here so that whenever this program is on the air, you'll see that. So when your listener looks at this on his iPhone or his Android phone, that's the information that will pop up. This will also rotate to other uh, maybe underwritings throughout the program, but it will always keep coming back to this during the time that Morning Glory is on the air, which is uh, 7 to 8 o'clock in the morning. And then down here on the bottom, there is a long skinny one, and this one too can rotate uh, and have more information. So uh, your imagination is basically your only limitation as to what you can do with this and the metadata. However, as I was saying, this uh, blog has to do totally with metadata and, and the importance of metadata. As I said in the very beginning, the, the, right now this is one of the most important tools in your toolbox relating to getting the message out, letting people know what you're doing, and so forth. I'm going to pause here for a second and show you what you could do if this were a, um, uh, a fun drive. And uh, hang on for just one second, I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm back, and I wanted to point out to you that you can also go to your computer. Now, I'm using a uh, Simeon automation system, BSI Simeon. You can also go on your computer when you have a pledge drive, and let's just suppose that instead of Morning Glory that was on the air right now, it was a pledge drive. Then you could manually enter this information, and as I've done here, please call to donate 888-888-8888. Don't call that number because it's not a real number. Uh, and then down here it says the spring uh, pledge drive. So you can add that information in at any time you want to. So if you have a pledge drive going on from, say, 8 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock at night, and you want to update people on, on where you are, uh, they can look at it on their iPhone or their tablet or their computer, and you can keep changing this information anytime you want to. Okay, next I'm going to uh, show you how to actually do this. So stand by.
Okay, folks, now we're back. Uh, this time, for those of you who are familiar with the Simeon automation system, uh, we are now looking at the uh, log for the radio station in Atlanta, WCFO, uh, the Quest, AM 1160. At this particular time, uh, it has just played the break. Now, you'll notice that this radio station uses a broadcast tools audio switcher to switch the audio on the air rather than switching the audio through the uh, audio card. The, the spots and so forth play through the audio card, but the audio, actual audio comes off of the audio switcher. I'll explain that uh, a little bit later in another video, why some stations prefer to use an audio switcher and others prefer to use just the mixer and the audio science card. In this case, as I said, we're using the the uh, broadcast tool switcher. So that said here, uh, where I'm putting my little arrow, SW3L, put the switcher on 3L, the third input of the switcher, and that means it's live. That's what I call it. But then after it does that, it continues on, even though this is not on the air, and it does this next event. It's called uh, MGID. MGID, I st it's, for me, it stands for Morning Glory ID. I'm going to click on this. Uh, Morning Glory ID, and I'm going to open this up and have you take a look at it. Now, one of the things that I really get on to all of my clients about is that the file names in these computers, and in particularly in Simeon, I don't know about the other ones, but in Simeon, they want to be very short. Eight letters and numbers. No more than eight letters and numbers. Oh, yes, it will work if they're longer. But remember, when this computer has to go find an audio file, it has to look through every one of them to find the one it needs. The more letters and numbers you put in, the bigger trouble you have. Most obviously, I'm sure you're aware, you're not supposed to put any apostrophes or dashes and don't put any, any uh, lines or anything such as that in a file name. Now, we're not talking about what it says up here, title and description and artist. This is where that information goes. Many of my clients, when they first start out with an automation system, give a file name the name of the program, that, like they would type in for this file, they would call it Morning Glory, uh, now on the air or something. Well, that's absolutely terrible. It should be like MG on or something like that because this is where you put the information, and this is in the editor, and you put it in where it says title and description, and you type in Morning Glory, now on the air. That's how that got there, and then the artist is Brian Patrick. Now, this is what you need to do for all of these metadata files is to give it the correct information. You could put just any amount of information. You could put telephone numbers or what have you in there. But that's how that information gets there. And you do need to do it for every piece of metadata you expect to be on the air. Now, it's easy with EWTN. Because the programs, you know when they're going to come up, you can just write a little short file and stick it in right after you put the program on the air. And that's exactly how it's done, and it's very simple. And once this is done, you don't have to redo it again. So I'm going to uh, pause here and go to another part of this. Now I would like to show you, if you would like to override the metadata that the computer is putting in and add some of your own metadata, like maybe you want to say special program coming up at 8 o'clock, you would uh, take your mouse and go to uh, where it says tools in the Simeon program. And in the tools section, there is an area called manual metadata. Now, unfortunately, my screen is not going to show you that, but this is what it looks like when it pops up. Then in here, you can type the information. You could say coming up, if I could spell it would be better, coming up, uh, special program, uh, Ron Kreider live at 8 a.m. 
All right, now when we do this and we push the send metadata, it will override the metadata that people are looking at on their iPhones and it will put that information up there and that information will stay there until the next time it gets new metadata. So I'm gonna uh, reset the defaults and I'm gonna push the send button and bingo, it's gone and it's now going to show up on the computers and on the iPhones. And when I come back, I'm going to show you another little trick. Okay, now we're back and I wanted to show you how that looks. So we entered into the manual metadata, Ron Kreider Live, 8 a.m. coming up. And there it is, and that appears on your screen. A couple of other things I wanted to point out to you. Uh, this picture over here on the left-hand side where it says 1160 AM and has a picture of uh, uh, the interior of a church or a cathedral, uh, that would change if you play something that has album art attached to it. So this would disappear, and the album art would show up. Uh, not a lot of the things that we put on the air right now have ab ab album art that follows, but if it were there, it would also show up there. Up top on this particular player, uh, there are five buttons across the top, some of which I haven't filled in, but uh, just to give you an idea of what that does, if I were to go up here and punch parishes, uh, it's going to display the parishes at the Atlanta Diocese, and you'll see there's the map, and there are all the different parishes, and of course you can do with it whatever you want. You can make it larger or smaller, uh, just like you would, you would normally be able to do. Uh, uh, but it's, it's a nice accent, a nice thing that you can do. Uh, this is, we cl click on this one, and this is the Arts Diocese, and it gives you information about the diocese in Atlanta. Uh, and you can make these do anything you want them to do. Uh, also, if you click on Morning Glory, uh, would take you to the Morning Glory website, which will give you some information about uh, Brian Patrick and the Morning Glory program. All of these can be linked to other areas, such as the Quest out here could take you to some more information about the Quest radio station in Atlanta. Back in just a moment. Okay, there's one more thing that I would like to mention on this uh, video blog that I made for the Catholic Radio Association. Uh, my name is, again, Ron Kreider. You can reach me at 772-913-2209. Uh, if you have issues with uh, your Simeon automation system or perhaps your SecureNet system for streaming, please feel free to give me a call. Best you send me a text message to 772-913-2209, and then I'll get back to you that way because I'm always pretty busy. By the way, this is free of charge to all of you who are members of the Catholic Radio Association. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll have some more for you coming up uh, dealing with the Simeon Automation System and transmitter plants and so forth. So any questions, please let me know. Also, uh, you can go to my website, Radio. 1920.com or globalamericanenterprises.com and there's lots of resources there for you Catholic broadcasters. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.